that. Is that bad? Uh, I have it on my phone, but yeah, I'm about to. Did he send you the info? No. Throw this it's on not the that phone big. Scheme. I mean, it depends if I need it. I don't need it. I don't know. You know, like I, I, I just need to know what you know where to go if it's. But I, I brought my uh, headphones for that. All right. See, you guys can hear each other. Oh, we can hear each other. Yeah, we're good with that. Loud and clear. So. Slam high school hoops. W slam. Get a raid. Yeah. Give me Are we on camera for this? Open in Kaz or no? Uh, are we? I mean, I'm. A, I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe. <laughs> well, well, this is all new to everyone. <laughs> we're we're ready to. I'm ready. Say that again. Oh, they can hear us live. Okay. All right. Yeah.
for Slam 16 NYC fueled by Gatorade. Kasim Famuide, I'm the voice Bobby C. Kaz. Great action here in the South Bronx today. Really excited about this matchup. And I'll tell you, folks, we have created essentially almost like the NBA bubble during the pandemic. We've done the same exact thing here for high school basketball. Everyone's been COVID tested. Gatorade and Slam have done everything they can to make this as safe an environment for the student athletes. And we're super pumped about this game. Yeah, Bobby, I got to tell you, man, it's been a long time since I got to see some high-level basketball IRL in real life, right? But, uh, you know, they have spared no expense. They have went through everything to make sure the players are safe, uh, the spectators are safe, the coaches are safe. I know we got COVID tested. We got the cool slam Gatorade masks on. But uh, we're here to watch some high-level basketball, man. It's crazy. Let's go. Slam 16, NYC fueled by Gatorade is underway. Team Red versus Team Blue will give you the players as we go along, but this matchup is packed full of stars. Destiny Adams, Sonia Citron, Kiki Rice, just to name a few. Yeah. Looking for that first basket of the ball game, Cass. And, and there it goes right there, man, that first basket. Scored by Ali Carmen, number 23. Shout out Ali Carmen, man. Listen, it's I know it's it's a lot. It's, it had to be a lot on these players, man, We're not really having the summer circuit that they're kind of used to, but recreating this atmosphere, getting some of the top players from the area, high Division One players getting ready to uh, get the, the, the autumn season started, or whatever we can call it, and that, that, there goes a bucket for Paulina Paris. Uh, Oh, that, Actually, being, that, that was Kiki Rice. Oh, my fault. That was Kiki Rice. My fault. Yep, from downtown for three, number seven. <laughs> yeah. Carmen now with a hook shot, and the lane is good for, for two, and that gives him the lead back, 4-3. You know, it's, it's an incredible atmosphere here, man. I, I can't tell you how much I miss watching live basketball and living color and uh, with some of the best girls high school hoops action in the city, in the tri-state area. I'm excited, man. This is dope. Yeah, so I'll give you the lineups here as we go along for Team Red. So again, number seven in the red is Kiki Rice. Number one is Paulina Paris. There is Rice off the backboard. We already mentioned Aaliyah Del oh, Rosario. High pockets. And the steal high and pocket is good for Raina Scott out of Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, I'm not going to hold you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see the full court pressure. This isn't your typical showcase high school game. Yeah, I remember a lot of these guys didn't get the typical summer circuit that they're probably used to during high school. So I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of iso ball. I don't think we're going to see a lot of hero ball. I think we're going to see some really good basketball action this afternoon. And the foul will send Paris Clark, class of 22. Number two to the free throw line. 5'8", athletic combo guard. Out of Mount Vernon, New York, and Long Island Lutheran. Yeah, plays with, plays with that Mount Vernon swagger, too, man. Anybody who's played against a Mount Vernon high school basketball team knows that they play with a little edge to them. So I like that. That ties the game at seven. Just under 14 here in the first. And the spin, tough shot. This time draws the foul on the opposite side. And there is Destiny Adams, who I mentioned in the opening, Kaz. Yeah, man, North Carolina commit. Uh, second best recruiting class in the country going in. Only second to uh, University of South Carolina right now. And uh, she's a hooper, man. She's big time. No doubt continues to emerge as an impact prospect here in the class of 2021. NJ.com first team All-State in 2020. Six foot three, hybrid three. On the other side, and that one goes out of bounds for Blue. So just like that, Team Red Cats will get the basketball back. You know, kind of, it, it, it's a little, you can tell that there's a little rust from a lot of these players, right? Like, uh, granted, it's been a difficult uh, year for everybody, you know, but you can tell that there's a little bit of jitters, there's a little bit of uh, uh, uncharacteristic turnovers in the first couple of games, or the first couple of minutes, but uh, hopefully we can settle in. Ali was missing the, the, the wide open bunny just now. Yeah, Carmen just misfired. Uh oh. Destiny Tessie. Adams. Lefty. In the lane. And a travel. Yeah, she got to go up with that left hand over there, Bob. Like, nice move. Nice little, nice little sauce on that hesitation step. But got to finish with that left. Sonia Citron, Kaz in the backcourt wearing number 11, gives it up. They swing it around the perimeter, and the outside shot is good for Ali Kerman. 
Yeah, she's not shy. Win. Yeah, not shy at all. Already got a few baskets. Red Bank Catholic High School, Red Bank, New Jersey. She averaged 13.6 and 5.1 rebounds this past season. Back on the replay with that last score as both teams just trading baskets here in the first, Cash. Yeah, man. You know, I feel like a lot of people are starting to get the sweat under them first. You know, get used to the, a lot of these players. You know, I know uh, Destiny Adams is playing against the majority of her AAU team right now. So it must be a little awkward for her going up against these players that she's so used to be playing with. At the line now is Caroline Lau, class of 22. 5-6 point guard out of Westport, Connecticut, playing at St. Luke's School. And that tied the game at 10. The second free throw gives them the lead. So Team Blue now on top, 11-10. Taking it over the timeline is number 7, Kiki Rice. 5-11 point guard gives it back up top for Paulina. That's a tough move right there. Paris. That's a tough move Taking right there. Taking it to I the like 10 that. for two. I like that. Now spinning to the backcourt, Kaz is Lau. They get it over the timeline. Left side for Citron. Up and under move is spectacular. Beautiful play by Sonia Citron. Sonia Citron, Notre Dame bound. I know Notre Dame had a powerhouse program back in my day. She could be one of the people to help turn it back into the national powerhouse that it once was. Paris on the wing, puts it on the floor, tries to penetrate, Ooh, throws up a tough, tough shot finish. and nails it. That's a tough finish. I thought she was, I thought she should have gave it up over there, but shut me up right there with that tough finish around the basket. Rising Junior there is a two-time Journal News Rockland Player of the Year. As that shot goes down for Citron on the other end, both teams trading baskets now a one-point game. Almost out of bounds, stepped on the line, so we'll go back the other way, Kaz. You know, Citron puts a lot of English on her finish, man. Like, there's some angles that you don't think that she'd be able to get up there when she gets to the backboard. But she's sold on back-to-back -back plays that she got that in her bag. Team Red going to go to the bench now, bringing in Jada Johnson, number three. They got three subs in the lineup. We'll also get a look at Angelica Velez, number five. We got a media timeout coming up right and now. Destiny Adams, number 20. You know, Bobby, this is, uh, I know, you know, shout out to Gatorade, man, for putting this thing together. I know it's, it's been a very tough year for a lot of players, for, for everybody across the world, but to be able to safely put together something like this, not just for the high school athletes, but for everybody, the families, you know, Slam, you know, Slam is fam all day, every day. But uh, it's really good to be back here in, the, in a historic oh, basketball landmark to watch some fantastic high school hoops man I, you don't know how you don't know what you got till it's gone it feels like right? you know and for our viewers at home we kind of talked about it briefly in the opening the pandemic has definitely been tough on everyone but especially the next generation so so many of the seasons for these players have been cut short opportunities to compete were taken away opportunities for championships abruptly halted and so many senior seasons cast were ended early so this is an opportunity between slam and gatorade to just put these players out there, give them a chance to regain some of the action basketball-wise that they lost. Yeah, Bobby, I got to tell you, man, I, I, I wouldn't be able to... I wouldn't know how to function if somebody came up to me and said, hey, your senior year of basketball, the, the time that you've worked so hard for, it's not going to happen. But, uh, you know, right now it's looking like we're, we're getting into the swing of things. And for as much as we can right now, we got some high-level high basketball action. There's a big steal right there. Then she got away with some steps. And that's right, it's coming back to red basketball. And the sweetest thing about this, Kaz, is that we're going to get a chance to see who's going to be next up in the tri-state in this game. This is the best of the best from New York City. The Slam 16 fueled by Gatorade. And you know what I dig about this game, man? It's not just seniors. There's some juniors in the mix. There's some hot rising sophomores. I mean, it really is the best of the best regardless of class, which I'm really into. The sub four blue there is Ariel Jackson, number three. Number 25, Kayleen Smichael also in the game for blue. Baseline runner comes up short. That is Riley Turkoff, class of 23, also now in the game. She's wearing number 14. Around the perimeter for Team Red. Jada Johnson, I highlighted moments ago. She's number three. 
Seven, of course, as Kiki Rice tries to penetrate, doesn't get it to go down. And down low is Ali Corman. I was like a stay in blue. Junior center. We'll have some more subs checking in for Team Blue is number 22. That's Shea Bolin, verbally committed to go to Duke. Out of Bridgewater, Massachusetts. You know, the Duke Blue Devils, they know how to get some talent, man. So if you see, you got to watch out for her cast today. I mean, uh, Boston Harold Dream Team 2020 got a lot of accolades to her resume. Mm. Turkoff comes up with the rock. She'll bring it up and over the timeline with the left hand. They try to get this one around the perimeter. Team Blue. Kayleen Smichael, number 25, gives it up right side. Oh, I like that move. along the baseline. Bit short. Second opportunity, no good. Nice effort there by Jackson. Good defense there by Turkoff. She comes up with the steal. Madison St. Rose is number 21 in red. She recently checked in there as Johnson goes up strong on the foul. Seems to be a lot of rust to shake off in these first couple of minutes, man. We're not but getting some of those subs in the game, Kaz. Very much, very true, very you true. Know, so both coaches go into the bench here in the first. But you know what I like, man? I like that they're playing hard. I like that, you know, people aren't treating this like this is an all-star game. I know Slams here. I know Gatorade's here. I know you got those those fancy names on the jerseys. But like you said, man, the pandemic changed a lot of things and has given these opportunities to these girls to, you know, really showcase what they've been working on all summer despite what's been going on in the world right now. So I like that we're getting the actual basketball game and not just a, you know, a bunch of isos and clear outs and all that type of stuff. Jada Johnson makes good on the free throw at a Hamden Hall Country Day School. Also checking in for Team Red is Raina Scott. She's a player to look out for as well. That shot from downtown is good. Buckets. And Count on the score up. for Team Blue is number 25, Kayleen Smichael, out of Farmingdale, New York. Also Long Island Lutheran. Baseline runner there. Well, now Lutheran got a powerhouse over there, don't they? Oh, absolutely. I mean, Smichael's another player that you're going to want to watch today, an agile guard. Definitely high offensive firepower. She can catch and shoot from beyond the arc. Smooth stroke. She's someone I'm excited to see play. Oh, yeah. Angelica Velez, who we mentioned moments ago as well, now at the free throw line, class of 23. Rising sophomore, I heard, absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. 5'7", out of Hamilton. Trenton Catholic Academy. She's played in some big games too, Cass. She played in the Blue Star in January of 2020, New Year's re uh, resolution the year before. Mm. An athletic floor leader with some some good play in the backcourt. We'll be interested to see what she's able to accomplish today. You know, when you're this young, uh, you can tell that she doesn't seem really intimidated by being one of the younger players on the court, man. And that's a big sign of somebody whose eyes don't get bright when the lights are bright on, you know? So, and she plays a lot of confidence and swagger, man. I've only seen her come up and down the court a few times, smiling at some teammates, smiling at a few people, you know, talking a little junk. You know, I like that. I really like that confidence that she got in the game. That's a big shot right there. Michael buries the three on one oh, side. Good and then Madison St. Rose does oh, you the gotta, same. You got to finish your one-point game. Yeah, 21-20 after the main threes. And that one goes out of bounds. 8.43 to play here in the first. So big time shots starting to fall here for both sides. You're watching the Slam 16 NYC fueled by Gatorade. Courtside with Kazim Fami Wede. I'm the voice Bobby C. Now the game tied at 21. Kaz, I like to call you the Prince, man. I don't know if that nickname <laughs> has stuck for you. Listen. But back in the college days, to me, you were the Prince. It wasn't outside, Maybe Bobby. you're the king now. Maybe you're the king. I, that's fine. I'm, I'm cool with that. I just work for the king. <laughs> that's all that is. But, yeah, no, oh, that's a tough bucket right there. There wasn't outside for the Prince days, man. Shout out to the Purchase Panthers. Soon he purchased. Oh, that's a tough shot and right this there. one inside the arc comes up a bit short. We'll take it back the other way for Team Red. Coming down with the rebound was Velez. Into the corner, trying to get something going from downtown. That shot, the rainbow arc, no good. Back comes Team Blue. Paris Clark pass. looking to push it, finds her teammate. That's a great and pass with the basket Paris. is Kayleen Smichael, number 25. She's been knocking down shots from the outside and now in the interior for two. Gives her team a two-point lead, 23-21, 7.47 to play here in the first. 
You know, when all else fails, when you're in these games where you're not necessarily super comfortable with some of the players, they aren't your high school teammates, they aren't your AAU teammates, you know, the best thing to do is run and pass, right? Just get the ball, give it up. You know, if you want to make friends really quickly with players that you're not necessarily used to, get up and down the court, give it up, give somebody a thumbs up and you get an assist, and I guarantee you'll probably get it back. Aliyah Del Rosario, number 23, is checked in for Team Red. 6'5", post player out of Hamilton. Trenton Catholic Academy. Hamilton, New Jersey, of course. Mm-hmm. So Jada Johnson oh, at nice. the stripe, missed it, but yeah, her teammate she, she <laughs> making to a, pick her up on the rebound and put back. Yeah, making an impact immediately as soon as she subs in, gets a big offensive rebound. And, uh, man, she's dwarfing the other girls out there, man. That is, that is a, a lot to get around if you're trying to box out there. And yeah, Del Rosario listed as 6'5". Also played Blue Star, NYC Hoops in November of 19. She played in some big games. Mm -hmm. Off the charts potential. And definitely tremendous footwork from all of the tape that I've seen on her, Kaz. You know, that's all it is with a, with a girl that size. You know, you got to make sure your footwork, footwork is right. Because, you know, you're going to get a lot of the violence down there in the big blocks, you know. So it is good to, oh, that's a, that's a turn right there. Yeah, that's superb, you know, basically that super superb mobility in the up-tempo game. That's something that we've seen from so many of the bigger players now in the game. You know, it used to be that a center might have that kind of clumsy tag to them. But, you know, nowadays you, you see centers knocking down threes. I mean, look no further than the WNBA Finals MVP, Brianna Stewart, man. That's a big girl, but she can do everything on the court. She can pass, she can dribble, she can spot up from three. She can defend one through five. That's where the women's game is going now, people. Can't just park yourself down in the blocks anymore. You got to show that versatility. And the same for Ali Carmen, who's played very well here in the first. We mentioned her before. She plays for the New Jersey Shore Shots AAU. And she's got a great highlight reel on YouTube. I, that was one of the things I was most impressed to in preparing for the game, Kaz, was to check out how many of the students. I know this is something that you're very big into these days, but, mm -hmm. you know, the opportunities for them to take advantage of the platforms to showcase their skills nationally on places like YouTube. And, and this is exactly what we have here today in a game like this that's being streamed Please. not only here in the U.S., but globally. I'll tell you this, back in my high school days, the only time anybody knew your name is if Tom Kachowski came to your game and watched you and got to describe you in full detail. But now, all you need is a camera, all you need is a cell phone, get you some highlights, and, you know, that puts a lot of these kids in great positions, man. You know, I feel like the Internet has made the world a lot smaller, and a lot of these great kids don't necessarily have to be at these big programs or these big showcases. Like, if you can hoop, you can hoop, and they'll find you. Elena Deladon, too, WNBA star, she did this awesome video and introduction preview for Gatorade. We'll talk about that in a moment. We're actually going to go to Camille with an interview. Just trying to get a win for the team, you know, play as hard as I can. Yeah, help, help us win. Sorry. Oh, I'm just excited to add value like right when I get there. So come and hustle, defense, score, whatever it takes for my team to win. Yeah. Yeah, it's great to play in an event with such great players um, from all around the area. It's like a, it's a great opportunity to get some great competition and, you know, ball out. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And Camille doing a good job. Court side. She's having a good hair day too, Kaz. I know that's right. Shout out Camille. Getting us all ready for the game. You know, she is knee deep into the women's game. And make sure you follow WSLAM on Instagram to get all the latest on the girls' high school uh, Super, game. super savvy when it comes to the game of basketball and not just women's basketball, but basketball in general. And I think that's something else that we wanted to stress, too. I think the growth of the women's game, the girls' game, is enormous, Kaz. I mean, so much so that I think you can 
put it on the same platform now and look at it through that same optic as the boys in, and the men's game. Well, you know what's going on right now, man. More eyes mean more opportunities, and all you got to do is look at the record numbers in the WNBA playoffs, the Wubble, WNBA finals, man. The girls' game, the women's game is growing on all levels, in high school, college, and the pros. Oh, in and out cross, but you got to finish your breakfast right there. If you want to turn him down, you can turn him down right here. Looks like we're coming back. It's going to be red ball. So Raina Scott, number 13, will take it over to TikTok. She goes strong to the basket all by herself. Can't get the finish there, but the rebound and pass. put back. Great pass by Angelica Velez, the sophomore, the super sophomore. And Del Rosario with the basket. Yes, sir. Focus. We got Leah in the post blocked. That's a huge block right there. Destiny Adams. Oh, man. And as you mentioned, Velez coming back over the timeline, and this will be a wide open basket for Team Blue, and Smichael, number 25, scores easily. It's 25 all with about six minutes left, and there goes another turnover by Team Red. Getting a little sloppy here, but you know what I say. Turnovers equal highlights. We're heading to the free throw line. Denver Anglin gonna shoot two. The Mount Vernon product. Shout out to Money Earn and Mount Vernon all day, every day. Just a hoops factory when it comes to New York State and the country. Goes two for two. Mm -hmm. Now under six minutes here in the first, 27-25. Jada Johnson. It's great defense. And you got to turn around and see the ball. Clark. And there is Carmen with the soft touch. It just rolls off the rim. Out of bounds. Yeah, we were talking about what Della Don was able to do for these young ladies coming into the game. I mean, that's got to be so incredible to get a message like that from a WNBA star, Cass. Absolutely, man. Elena Deladon has had an incredible career, an incredible journey, you know, throughout their, her entire, you know, college and pro career. Citron just missed on that one on the layup, and then the touchdown pass sails out of bounds. Looking a little bit like Daniel Jones and Sam Darnold uh, out absolutely, there. Absolutely, yeah. Well, let's not talk about that. <laughs> it's a happy day. It's happy time. No, no football. No, no New York City football. Not here. No, <laughs> not here in New York. <laughs> Couple of subs here checking in for Team Red. Paris is back, number one. Rice is also returned, number seven. And I believe Adams also just checked back in, number 20. Yep. Carlisle Lau with the deep three and the miss. Oh, that's pass, a great pass. Feed, threads the needle. There you go. And then the finish. Speaking of Madison St. Rose, we mentioned her moments ago. Paulina Here Paris with a great pass right there. Finding the open girl. She's NJ.com player of the year. Sonia Citron and again. Citron, another one of the stars in this game at Ursuline Academy. Yeah, fighting Irish, you're going to like that. Back to the top of the key here for Paris. She gets the screen. Looks like she got away with some steps right there, but it don't matter. Shot in the lane is just missed. But the offensive rebound will give Team Red another crack at this. That shot left at the rim, picked up by Turkoff. Trying to find Citron. They would have had an easy path to the basket there, but a foul will stop the action here at 423. Mm -hmm. Still a two-point game, 29-27. You're watching Slam 16 NYC, fueled by Gatorade. Kazim Famiwide, now the king. Yes, sir. <laughs> and uh, I'm the voice, Bobby C. Appreciate you checking us out. You can be anywhere on in the world. On a Halloween afternoon. You can be anywhere in the world on a Halloween Saturday, but you're here with us. Watch some high-level high school hoops. We appreciate that. And this, of course, the world-famous Gaucho's Gym. It's an iconic place to play. Let's here see. in the South Bronx, only about five blocks away from Yankee Stadium. You know, honestly, honestly, 
If you call yourself a New York City Hooper and you haven't touched down at Gaucho's gym, I question your credentials. Can't question the credentials of any of these ladies, though. That one goes out of bounds, so Blue will take over. I mean, the amount Absolutely. of... Absolutely. I mean, the home the home court of, of Kimball Walker, Man. Stephon Marbury. I mean, even going back, Rod Strickland, Chris Mullen, Ed Pinckney, Jamal Mashburn, Man. you name it. Man, the amount of professional basketball players, the amount of not even just pro basketball players, just ball players that are just influential in the, in the culture and the game of New York City basketball is endless when it comes to Gaucho's gym. This gym right here that we're standing in has just as much history as any NYC hoop and staple. Super move there. Name. Cast by Paris Clark as she looks to enter name into the list of greats that have played well here at the Gaucho's gym in the South Bronx. Turk off with another steal. She's played well defensively here in the first. Team Red able to take it back as Destiny Adams. They move the ball around well there, and Madison St. Rose comes up with another basket. Keeping things tight here, 31-29. 3.18 to play in the first. Turk off, and a double dribble will take it back. Yeah, I mean, Kaz, to me, we're going to have a media timeout, but this place has been a beacon of hope for so many inner-city youth. Absolutely. We're going to have an interview. Well, maybe. Well, maybe not. There we go. We were going to go to Camille, but we're going to stay here with the action, of course. It's a live show, baby. We just roll with it. <laughs> That's a tough move. And the foul by Destiny Adams. You know, it's hard to believe, too, Kaz, that the Gaucho's gym, I mean, we say 1985. 1985 is a long time ago. Mm hmm But uh, again, my time. Yeah, you know, it's uh, <laughs> The youngsters here get a chance to come into this building and they see all the, the jerseys, the re, like kind of like the retired numbers, yeah. the legends and some of the names hanging from the rafters. Yeah, I mean, gosh, you, you got guys like Russ Smith in the Hall of Fame, Louisville, great. You got Steven Sello, you know what I mean, who's coached so many of the greats that ended up going to high-level college basketball and the NBA. I mean, we're really on hollowed ground right here. Missed free throw there by Destiny Adams on the other side, and then the foul by Kiki Rice, number seven in red, will send Kayleen Smeichel, number 25, to the line. We're going to get a chance to see that Della Don video, too, I believe, Kaz, which is, which is great. We're going to play that soon, I believe, for you guys. Yeah, let's get to it, man. Actually, we're going to go to it now. Why not? Break in the action. So Smichael will be at the line. Missed on the free throw on the first. Second free throw is good. Want to give a shout out to also all of the staff here on this broadcast cast. We've done a great job of bringing the elements together here. As we mentioned, just, you know, I think the safest place to be right now in the Bronx is our high school basketball pandemic bubble here at the Gaucho's gym. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll tell you this, man. No, no expense was spared over here. If you look on the corners and the bench, each individual player has their own individual cooler, you know, so there'd be no sharing of Gatorade. There'd be no sharing of droplets or germs or anything like that. So anybody who has any sort of COVID 
would like concerns, uh, those uh, questions should be quelled, man. Shout out to Gatorade for putting this together. And Gatorade's got something really cool that we're going to show the fans at home today, too. We've got the cooler can, which you'll get a chance to check out and see. Really, really cool kind of uh, additive to the broadcast. Down the middle is Paris, and she finishes strong. It's a tough move. Right now, I, I believe she, you know, it's crazy with the rankings, too, Kaz, but, you know, they, they do fluctuate, but she was uh, ranked number 10 via ESPN. Makes sense to her. I mean, she averaged 25 points a game, seven rebounds, three steals, two assists. She, uh, she shot 55% last year from the field and 33% from three. Well, from what I've seen of her this afternoon, man, she plays with a lot of swagger. You know, she plays loose. She plays free. She's not afraid to give it up when, you know, make some of those difficult passes, threaten the needle. I mean, I could see her playing a lot of point guard at the next level. She's got a nice size to her as well, you know? Yeah, I mean, she went to Magnus and then, of course, the, uh, the transfer to Saddle River Bay in New Jersey. Speaking of Paris, trying to go coast to coast. The bounce pass and the finish along the baseline, no good. But the rebound picked up there by Madison St. Rose, number 21. Back to Paris at the top. She'll fire from downtown, and she buries the three. Give me all three of these. Paulina Paris knocks it down. And all of a sudden, Team Red, large in a charge here in the first. They've taken a three-point lead, 35-32. That one lost in transition and picked up by Team Blue. You know, they got a lot of uh, advantages in transition. You got to get that up. You can't beat the transition on the dribble. You can beat it with the pass. So we keep that head up, kick it up, and get the easy one. Trust me, coaches notice those, those plays too. <laughs> and Johnson will check back into the game, Jada Johnson. Oh, hold on. Looks like we got a we pause in the action right here. There was six players on the foot on the court. So um, Smichael will inbound, and there is Jackson. And Jackson's actually got a cool story because her mom played in the WNBA. Nice. You might remember Kim Hampton. She played for the Liberty from 97 through 99. She was actually the fourth pick in the inaugural WNBA draft. Oh, man, fun fact. I was at that first ever WNBA game when I was a little 1997. 1997, yeah, right against the Houston Comets, I believe. That was Caroline Lau on the basket as time was winding down here in the first showing your age guys oh you yeah look great though man you do hey man black don't crack you know how i go <laughs> <laughs> shout out to my mom she brought me to that WNBA game when i was a little it was great i met a moderate shot there that day oh, no. good old days of the liberty actually yeah teaspoon, teaspoon yeah becca lobo oh look at that it's a great pass kiki rice with the finish the left hand that's what you'd like to see on the opposite foot too 37 34 you know she did it so smoothly you don't really realize how hard it is to get that opposite foot left hand layup smichael just misfires fight for the rebound 12 seconds to play you're watching slam 16 nyc fueled by gatorade Kasim famuide i'm bobby c historic gaucho's gym here on halloween 2020 that shot from three it's off like, the heel, no good. That's a tough, tough rebound, but you got to finish and it. Back almost at the buzzer, just can't get it to go down. So that's how we'll finish with Team Red here at the end of one. Clinging to a three-point lead. Kaz, good game so far. I think all these young ladies really got situated. Again, in a historic venue, an historic gymnasium for a big-time game. And this game giving an opportunity to so many student athletes that, again, was taken away from them during these last few months. Of course, I'm not going to hold you, man. It's a little sloppy in the beginning of the game, but now you can start to see, starting to see people starting to gel as they go up and down the court. Obviously, nobody's expecting to see 20-second, uh, 30-second possessions when it comes to uh, you know a game kind of put together like this. But it's good to see them playing hard. It's good to see them uh, diving after loose balls, playing for deep, playing lots of defense, playing for the turnovers. You know, it feels like these girls have brought their A game. A lot of them have committed to high-level college uh, colleges already, but some of them haven't. Some of them still have a lot to prove today. So, you know, somebody's going to be out here watching this tape, watching this live stream, watching on Slam Highlights, saying, you know what? This is the person we need to go after. This is the person that we need to keep our eye on for next year or the year after that. 
We're going to check out this video with this WNBA star. Bella Don, take it away. Are you ready? The Slam 16 Fueled by Gatorade is on now. I was always just very into competing against myself. Like, stop trying to make comparisons with everyone else because it feels like in high school and AAU, everybody's comparing you to the next best player. Um, and it was really important for me to only just compare myself to myself that day. For me, it's never been about like, I'm ranked number one, like who cares? Because there's always so much more to improve on. Because well, if you get stuck on the trolls, I feel like you get stuck in that moment. So just continue to grow the game, be the best player you can possibly be because that makes the game fun to watch. Um, and forget about, you know, the opinions of others who want to bring you down because that's today's world, unfortunately. Ladies and gents, great video there from Elena Deladon, WNBA star, as Kaz and I had talked about during the first half. You're watching Slam 16 NYC, fueled by Gatorade, live here from the Gauchos Gym. Historic site for basketball as we get a chance to check out some of the best young talent that the women's game has to offer. Kaz, again, as you mentioned, an exciting first half. I think, you know, some ups and downs, but we got a chance to see some of the best from some of the players that we spoke about, some of these top young stars but I'm excited I think in the second to see even more of that you know I mean I, I think you're going to see a lot more uh, as we progress here in the game and then again probably working off some of that rust and, and getting acclimated and they realize that so many college coaches are checking out this game on the stream people are watching from home and, and uh, yeah, I'm sure it probably plays a little bit of role in some of those uh, some of those nerves listen much. I, I'll tell you this man like it, you can work out you can do drills you can do as much as you want Nothing can replicate in-game action. And obviously, in the first half, the, the, the main attractions, the star players that we spoke about, showed why they're the star players. Senior Citron showed us a lot already for Team Blue. Uh, you know, Destiny Adams on Team Red absolutely made some great moves. I've seen a lot of Angelica Velez. I know she's a sophomore. She's looking like she plays with a lot of moxie. She plays with a lot of smart. She's made a lot of, a lot of plays that didn't necessarily result in assists, but you can tell that she plays the game with a good head on her shoulders. Yeah, I mean, and that's impressive, too, for Velez because class of 2023 at a new heights, you know, probably the next big-time guard here in the city. Yeah, man. She's not, the, 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 the lights are not too bright for her. So uh, that's what you like to see with somebody who's this young coming into a game with this many established upperclassmen stars uh, throughout the city. So that's going to be a name to look out for for the next several years. And this matchup, too, seems to be, you know, you have so many players from the Exodus team that are involved in this game. We've got girls that play for Gauchos already here in the Bronx. So, you know, you get a chance to see some of these top flight AAU programs basically put their stars out in front for everybody to see on a national stage. Well, I'll tell you this, man. Even though high schools are, are kind of in and out and things are shut down, the, the AAU train is not stopping for anybody. So they will make sure that they get their top players out here showcased so people can see you know, what they're investing into, man, especially when it comes to these top colleges. This is the Northeast Coast. I mean, from New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, this is where a lot of the top female basketball players, you know, get their, get their stars at. So even if somebody is not committed right now to the top of the tops of the North Carolinas and the Yukons and the Notre Dames of the world, there is a lot to look forward to and a lot to like from both teams on red and blue. We actually wanted to give a shout out too to our coaches because we've got two really high profile coaches in this game for Team Blue. We've got Joanne Arbatello, positive direction out of Queens, the AAU program. We speak about some great AAU programs. And on the on the red side, you got Earl Elliott, the executive director of the Gauchos. So a pretty cool matchup there. And obviously Arbatello's brother is the head coach of Christ the King. I'm sure you've heard of his name, Joe oh, yeah. Arbatello. The legendary Joe Arbatello of Christ the King High School. So that also adds another little wrinkle to this matchup. You've got these two high-profile coaches, again, with all these top stars, this young talent here in the tri-state area. And that begs that question that we mentioned earlier in the broadcast. You know, who's going to be the next to emerge here from the tri-state? I think that's something that so many of our followers,
supporters and our fans that check out Slam on socials are interested in. I think that's probably what makes this game maybe not just this game alone, but the high school platform as popular as it is. Because yeah, so man. many people are going to watch these players probably on the next level, the college game, and then some of which, many of which, are probably going to play Ooh, Excuse me. I'm sorry, Bobby, but did you see that? Uh, the, the crossover My and then Carmen goodness. with the finish. Allie Woo. Coleman for two. Good way to get started for Team Blue. Caroline Lau put somebody in the blender just now. My goodness. I don't know if we got instant replay, but I, I'd love to see that again. And Lau, position rank 19 by ESPN. She played in the Future Stars game in 2018. She might be one of the players that wasn't as known uh, coming into this matchup, but she's already had a few highlights in this game so far. She played very well. Well, she got that thing on a string, man, and she's looking to get another bucket. Yeah, that's all that, you know, basically court awareness, that basketball IQ. Jump shot here. Karen is off the backboard. And there is Citron who will give it up. Lyle again. Pass and now gives it back to Sonia for two. So the verbal commit to Notre Dame, picking up another basket. Very skilled guard. Penetration in the lane for Team Red, but they can't finish around the rim. Back comes Team Blue. Paris Clark, that one will sail out of bounds. 14-45 here in the second half. Still a very close game, only a one-point matchup. And when Paris Clark gets the ball, she is not looking to do anything but penetrate and kick. She has, uh, you know, she puts her head down and she's making sure to get into that paint and make something happen in there. Jada Johnson, number three, baseline. Ooh. Good defense from behind by Paris Clark, number two. Clark's got a lot of length, too, man. She got beat but came back and got a clean block right over the head. Very difficult block to do without fouling, so... Great defense right there. Raina Scott, number 13 on the inbound. That shot by Paris. Rims in and out. So on the floor for Team Red, Paris and Scott. Up front, you've got number 13, Aliyah Del Rosario. Number 23. There goes Paris Clark again trying to penetrate. Destiny Adams is number 20. Number three is Jada Johnson. Those are the five on the floor for Team Red. Carmen fires. That one doesn't go down. You know, she, she was almost looked like she was surprised that they were going to give her that mid-range. You got to turn around and shoot that. Don't wait for them to guard you. And Paris will draw the foul. Tight game here, though, man. One-point game, 38-37. Both teams playing really hard. It's one of those games that we're looking for an exciting finish, man. And Paris still gets some kudos there from her teammates. That free throw just trickles off the rim. She's going to gather herself from the charity stripe. Much better there. Tickles the twine. Knocks down that second free throw, and that's a clutch one because it ties the game at 38. Under 14 here in the second. Caroline Lau on the right side, number one. Game tied at 38. Team Blue, she'll fire from downtown. That one just a bit short off the front iron. And picked up by Del Rosario. The cross-court pass. Jada Johnson in the lane. Great defense Double team, good defense. Yeah, absolutely. And stolen. Into the goes passing Paris lane. Clark. Got that thing on a string. Going up. Count the bucket. And Paris Clark for Muddy Earn and Mount Vernon. That's a tough, tough bucket right there. My goodness. Let's see that one again. Behind the back. And the crafty Cradles playmaker. Up. With and that in scorer's mentality. With the English. <laughs> that, was my, that was my Clyde. Yeah, was, that my, was my Clyde all right, Bobby? That uh, was good. <laughs> I think he'd be impressed. <laughs> uh, I got to finish the three-point play, though. Misfired on the free throw. But she's showing you her court awareness and able to execute very well in that half-court setting. Absolutely. That shot in the corner for three is no good. 
comes Clark. Oh, oh behind, behind the, the back. back. Looks like Carolina Lau wasn't ready for that, but Paris Clark's going to be wide open for this I corner don't think three. in the gym was ready for that. He was ready for and that three, though. Clark. And the crafty playmaker strikes again. You know, just like she drew it up. Off the backboard, behind the back. <laughs> wide open for the three. I mean, she averaged 17.7 .7 points per game this past season. And she was ranked number six by ESPN. We'll have a timeout. The Newsday Long Island Player of the Year. Oh, yeah. Harris Clark for 2020. You know how we come and come for nothing, not yet. That's why we've partnered with Gatorade to showcase this, this and this, just this incredible, incredible talent, Kaz. Slam 16 NYC fueled by Gatorade. A shout out to the cooler cam right now. We're getting a different angle, a different view of the game right here from down on court side. We see the boys for the boys game warming up on the sideline, getting the best view of the house. That's a cool shot. 43-38, 12-49 here in the second. Team Red with the inbound. Raina Scott taking a hard to the hoop. And she's going to shoot two. It's a tough drive to the basket. Raina Scott. Number 13. And rewarded with two free throw shots. Yeah. Gonna start climbing back into this game. It's only a four-point lead, but the way this game's going, you don't know if it's gonna end up tight or so, or blue could end up pulling away. Bishop Lachlan's Ariel Jackson, number three, checks back in the AAU hoop star. Yes, sir. Balling like Bishop Lachlan and Johnson. I mean, you gotta get extra points if you're a high school's name dropping the rock song, right? <laughs> Raina Scott knocked down that second free throw, the junior from Nazareth High School. Average 17.3 last year. I feel like I would specifically go to a high school if my favorite rapper name dropped it. <laughs> Shout out Bishop Lachlan. This is Paris Clark once again. Does not use the screen set by Lau, but goes into the lane. Thought she got the foul. She lands out of bounds, so we'll go back the other way. Three-point game here, 12-25 in the second. Team Red will take over, take this one over the timeline on the right side. And Kiki Rice. Raina Scott. Strolling to the right hand in the lane. That's going to be great, great defense just now. And good defense by, by Jackson. Jackson. Lau in the post with the right shot hand. Off the backboard, no good. We got a three on two break, four on two if they Destiny do it right. Adams trying to Kiki Rice kicking out wide open to Madison St. Rose. That's off. We got a two on one break. Paris Clark, Sonia, back to Clark. Let's go, let's go. Turnover. Stolen away in transition. And then now Kiki Rice up. Looks like going to shoot two. Right now. And speaking of players of the year, the District of Columbia Gatorade Player of the Year for 2020, Kiki Rice. Her position rank for ESPN, this will be two shots, number one. She's ranked number one in her position. To Washington, D.C., Sidwell Friends School. I mean, some big schools looking at her, Kaz. Arizona, Stanford, UCLA, UConn, Louisville, Boston College. 
Washington Post first team all Metro also in 2020. Well, she got the pick of the litter right there, man. And you got to like her game. She's got good size, good handle. Seen her finish a few tough layups back and forth and can stroke her from deep. Knock down the free throw. Yeah, she's played in some other big high profile games too. Fans at home might have watched her in the Boo Williams Invitational, the USA Trials, or the Blue Star matchup. And of course, getting a chance to play here right now in the Slam 16 NYC. Ooh. Nice move. And the finish. My Jackson. Making her WNBA mom proud at home. I know that's right. That's a pro move. That's what we call a grown-up move. A pro move right there. Splitting the defense, getting through traffic, and finishing. 45-41 after that basket. 11.05 to play. And Lau will bring this one up. She wants to pick from Turkoff, number 14. Woo. And Lau again with it on the floor. Throws up a tough floater, can't get it to go. Listen, she's missed a few of these shots, but she's been shifting defenders left and right with that in and out crossover. Both teams sharing some laughs. There's Destiny Adams. <laughs> As that one trickles out of bounds, so it'll be Team Blue basketball. Paris Clark in the lane again. Paris Clark knocks it down. Getting buckets right now. I think she's got that's the seventh point of the half. She's Six been, point game, Cass. She's been the difference in the second half, man. The, the half started off tied up. Blue was up six. There he comes Paris Clark again. Looking to get some more. Clear path to the basket. Good defense though by Red as they swoop in. That's a wide open. Lefty, Kiki Rice up and then count that. 47-43 after that make. Here we go. Four point game right now. Shea Bolin back in the game, comes up a bit short. Ariel Jackson with the board. Looks like she's going to shoot two. She's made her impact, you know, felt ever since the second half started. Even if she's not scoring, she seems to be doing a lot of positive things on the court, whether it's getting a rebound, getting a little deflection, things that don't necessarily jump out on the scoreboard. But these are things that help your team win and help your team climb back and pull away. Bolin will sub out Kaz, and Carmen comes back in. Three after the free throw, Team Red. Angelica on the Velez. offensive, that shot from deep. Oh, baby. And knocking down the triple for Team Red, mm. number five, Angelica Velez. The super sophomore. And just like that, Team Red back in the game. They trail by three. Jackson with the bounce pass. It's stripped. Hands in the cookie jar for Velez. Trying to go coast to coast. Velez bounce Woo! pass along the baseline. It's saved. And Team Red will regroup. 9-17 to play. Penetration. Oh, that's going to hook shot. And the foul. Very close to a three-point play right there. But I really like the toughness of Angelica Velez, man. She has, she plays with a chip on her shoulder, you know, plays with a certain toughness. And that shot right there with the in and out crossover, step back three. A step back three is going to be like the 2020 hook shot, right? Like just the unguardable shot in basketball. Like if you got it in your bag and you ain't using it, huh, good luck. <laughs> Absolutely, Kaz. I think she's really displayed a combination of so many different things so far we've seen from her through most of this game. And that includes that scorer's mentality. She's been a pesky defender. Definitely a stock riser and a one-on-one -on -one creator, too, in this match. We've seen her do some damage offensively so far. Carmen down low. That's a good matchup between her and Del Rosario. And the foul. That'll send Carmen to the charity stripe. 8.58 to go. 49-46. Touched all parts of the rim before going down. <laughs> so Carmen pushes that lead back up to four. The second made free throw makes it a five-point lead for Blue. 51-46.
8.58 to go. And they're picking up full now. Velez had the inbound. There is Paris. Count the bucket. And Aaliyah Del Rosario for two. Aaliyah Carmen came down, got two shots. Aaliyah Del Rosario comes right back. I'll and tell counters. you, Jess, she consistently finishes play in traffic. And she's got super hands. Well, look at her, Three man. Point play. Look at her. I mean, she's the biggest girl on the court. So as soon as she's come in, she's made an immediate impact. Off the charts potential, no doubt about it. Absolutely. Carmen rips the basketball away and goes up strong to draw the foul. And there goes Carmen again. You know, when the game started, she's... She absolutely dominated like the first five minutes of this scrimmage and uh, kind of fell off during the middle of the game, but now she's looking to assert her will. One more again. And Blue has to be careful because Red is right in this game. It's a one possession game. Oh, yeah. A two point game, 51 49. Carmen missed on the first free throw. Second one is up. That one rims out. Here's a chance for Red to tie it up or take the lead. Velez, Angelica Velez pass. with the dime. Oh, oh baby. The touch pass for the easy lay. Angelica Velez. Oh, baby. 51 51. Jackson. Jackson. With that Fred cross. Stone shuffle. Carmen kicks it back outside for Smichael. Throws the double team into the corner. Jackson will fire for three. How it is. Buries it from downtown. Oh, Dr. Kaz, what a My shot by goodness. Jackson. goodness. And that's not easy, man. Right over Leah Del Rosario. That was dotted right in her eye. And it looks like we're going to get some more. But she looks with up. The steal. Jackson with the left hand pass. pass. Took off for two. It. And Blue has regained the lead. Oh, baby. We're looking for a fun finish. It's going to be a goodie right here. Paris running the baseline with oh, a left good hander team from Paris Clark. Behind by Paris Clark. Velez now on the floor. Bounce pass inside for Del Rosario. Picked up there. Pockets picked by Clark. Jackson, the leader to the 10. Jackson for two. Jackson has absolutely taken this game by the neck and is trying to end it here. And a running left-hander. This one rolls off the front of the rim. Carmen picks up the rebound and is fouled. 58-51. A lot of action there in those couple of minutes. Oh, yeah. That's what I came to see, man. Girls getting crossed up. Buckets and ones. And we've got a timeout. Ain't no better place to be in New York City right now if you're a fan of hoops. Right here in the Gaucho's Gym. Shout out to Slam. Shout out to Gatorade. Man, I missed this. <laughs> and we're going to go to Camille. Who's got Sonia Citron? I know. It's an add, like added pressure. All right, uh, you guys are starting to take over uh, the lead here. Really strong game for you. What was your mentality coming into today? Um, honestly, I just wanted to have fun. I mean, this is such a great opportunity, and I'm blessed to be able to play in it. So really just coming out here, playing basketball, and just having fun. Yeah, and you're going into your senior year, a lot of uncertainty. We don't know if there's going to be a season. What does it mean, and why is it so important to play in any opportunity that comes along? Right. Um, I mean, it, it has been really heartbreaking, just like even the thought of not having a high school season, not being able to play basketball like, like I normally would be able to. So just being able to play in any game, especially something as like incredible as this, I mean, it really means a lot. Yeah, and now you're committed to Notre Dame. You're going to join Coach Ivy. What about that program stood out to you? Um, honestly, just Coach Ivy. I mean, everything about the program, but especially Coach Ivy, just the coaching staff, just their energy and passion. I just knew that that's who I wanted to play for. Amazing, thank you. Thank you. The New York State Gatorade Player of the Year, Sonia Citron. Checking in with Camille. Notre Dame bound, fighting Irish, getting a good one over in South Bend. Folks, if you're joining us late, you're watching Slam 16 NYC, fueled by Gatorade, Team Red versus Team Blue. And our courtside reporter, Camille, just had the New York State Gatorade Player of the Year for 2020, Sonia Citron. As Kaz mentioned, going to Notre Dame by way of Ursuline Academy out of Scarsdale, New York. 
Kelly Carmen, number 23, has had a very, very strong game at the free throw line, though. Misses on that second free throw. The offensive rebound and putback effort. Two times the charm. It's good. And Jackson's starting to really heat up here in the second. Oh, yeah. He's putting the team on her back right now. The line is into the corner. Okay. Harris will spot up. Has just a bit short. Oh, yeah. Good shot, though. Had an open look at the cup. I was about to say, he can't give it that much space. And look who, Loud guess who? Jackson. Oh! Miss fires from point blank range. But Jackson, with the hustle, gets it back. Finds Carmen down low. Puts it up. No good. Second effort. Yes! You know, I was two seconds away from saying Ariel Jackson's trying to stat pad real quick. Get the assist up. <laughs> and the junior center knocks down another two. 62-51. And that bucket gives the first double-digit lead of the afternoon. And it's been a pretty nip and tuck game all afternoon. But ever since Ariel Jackson got in in the second half, she's absolutely taken this game by the throat. Whether it's a bucket, whether it's a steal, whether it's an assist, she's done it all in the second half. Free throw is good for the D.C. Gatorade Player of the Year for 2020. Kiki Rice checking back in will be Shea Bolin. Number 22 for Team Blue. And Weiss will have another. It's a 10-point game. Top player at her position in the rankings by ESPN. Jackson will bring this one up the floor. I'd like to see more from Shea Bolin here in the second half. I'm sure Team Blue would like to see that as well. Jackson finds Bolin into the corner for Lau. On the wing, actually. That one in the corner is shot for three. And it's missed. Picked up by Paulina Paris. Brings it all the way up the floor. Dancing around the arc. This one into the corner for Velez. Angelica Velez. You know, it's winning time right now. It'll stay with Red, too, Kaz. Down by nine. About six minutes left in the game. Time to start chipping away here. Destiny out right away. just returned. She just checked in and scores right off the bench. 62-55. Destiny Adams for two. Just too easy on the dump in. You gotta, you gotta front that, especially when they're inbounding the ball. Great pass, Sonia Citron. A lot of versatility in Sonia's game, man. You come for the buckets, you stay for the assists, and the smart, heady basketball plays that make coaches very, very happy. Get them on the line, shooting two. And Smichael, number 25. Kayleen Smichael, class of 22. I love how unselfish she is in her demeanor. Confident, versatile on the perimeter. I mean, that's something that a lot of, a lot of young girls could take from this game if you're watching right now, man. You don't necessarily need to shoot every time you get the ball to make a difference in the game. Yeah, Kaz, I mean, it's all about, at this point in the game, I would say drawing contact and finishing plays. Angelica Velez. Oh, bomber from bottles. the outside. And they're going to need a lot more than that if they want to make this a game. Oh, and there's steps. 64-58, everything getting... Getting a little tight. Getting a little tight here down the stretch. That's what we want to see, though. We want to, we want to see things uh, lit here in the uh, second half. Of course, of course. That's what we got. And Angelica Velez wide open. She's been hot. Oh, and the pass Turn intercepted the by Jackson. And Jackson. Jackson starting defensively here in the with second the half. This one stolen by Velez. Splits the double team. Looks like she's going to take it, kick it, gets it back. She saved it along the baseline, but the bounce pass it's nearly so intercepted. Swing it over to Kiki. Kiki looks like she's going to calm it down a little bit. Or pull it up. No. Nope. And that one goes out of bounds. Six-point game. Five minutes left. Whoever got the, the stupid finish alert button, please press it right now. <laughs> I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. Under five minutes to go. And it's a six-point game. 64-58. Dumping right into Destiny. Destiny Adams. Swing to Kiki, wide open. You got to hit that one. There it Knocks is. Down the two, leather through lace, baby. Raina Scott makes it a four-point game with four minutes and 40 seconds left in the Slam 16 girls game. Paris Clark. Paris Clark misses, and here we go with an opportunity to make it a two or one-point game. Madison St. Rose spins. 
Spins, Looking kicks wide open. open. Right up for three. And Scott misfires, number 13. Staying here. Malia Del Rosario will check back in, number 23. She subs in for Jada Johnson. We've got three subs for Team Blue. Turkoff back in. Carmen, number 25. Turkoff, of course, 14. And Smichael is number 25. So 422 to play here in the second. It's a four-point game. Inbounding for Team Red will be number seven, Kiki Rice. They trail this one. Quick dump is Destiny, Destiny Adams. Off. And they needed that shape by a little bit. Ooh, that's a tough shot. That's a and tough she's shot. Got it for two pushes that lead back up to six. Raina Scott. No one's going to stop Raina Scott. She's going right to the hoop. Doesn't finish. Adams again in the lane. This time she gets it to full. We got about four minutes left in the game. I think we've got to talk a lot more about the play of Riley Turkoff as that shot is missed. Class of 23, Whoa. another one of the young players here yeah. in this game that maybe some Look. of our fans at home might not know as much about this game for, you know, being class of 23, but she scored 521 points this past season. Man. That's pretty good. She had oh, a 41-point yeah. game and another 37-point game. Speaking as of As you see her almost knock down that shot. Mm -hmm. Freshman guard this past season averaged over 20 points a game. We're going to go again to another interview cast. 327 to go. Stay with us. You're watching Slam 16 NYC Fueled by Gatorade. Pace, close game. You've been playing incredibly all day. What did you? What was your mentality coming into today? Well, my mentality was just to play the game, just to get that, come out with that W. Yeah, you're about to enter your junior year, and so a lot of things got canceled this year. AAU, all that. So what does it mean, and why is it so important to play in an opportunity like this? Um, it's very important just because you know, obviously with the virus, everything is canceled. So just to get this opportunity to have coaches, scouts, everybody look at you. Yeah, so like you just mentioned, a lot of eyes on this game, a lot of people watching. Uh, you haven't made your decision for where you're going to play no. at the next level. So what do you want to say to a program, or what's, what can you add to a program to play at the next level? Um, I feel like I could just give everything, give all to the program. You're playing an incredible game. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, Paris. No problem. And Camille getting a chance to speak with Paris Clark during the break. Paris Clark's had a pretty nice game this afternoon, man. Got a couple buckets. Absolutely, the athletic combo guard. I don't know how many rebounds she got, but I, I could count at least on my two hands how many times she's come down and ran one back and ran the point, which is a, a great, great, great attribute to have as a, as a guard. Everybody wants to be a big guard in 2020, right? All about versatility, all about small ball, all about being able to play multiple positions at once. So if you can handle the rock and get your own rebound, Man, that's going to make coaches real happy. Yo, Kaz, I think the mid-range jump shot is making a comeback, my friend. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because you know what? She's one of the players in this game that has a good one. Yeah, you know what? It, it's one of those things that you don't really appreciate it until you see it in uh, in close games. we got a close game here right now. And uh, she's she's been hitting that all day today. Yeah, only a four-point game, so essentially a two-possession game. Oh, Hezzy. Oh, Cross. Oh, Florida. My God, Raina Scott getting to the, ho to the hoop with a bevy of buckets, a bevy of moves right there. That hesitation into the crossover, man. She's going to shoot two right here. Could have been three. So Scott at the charity stripe, as Cass mentioned. Knocks down the free throw, makes it 66-63, and returning for Team Red will be Paulina Paris. Having an outstanding game so far today. She's number one, uniform number one. Second free throw shot. That one rims out. Picked up by Smokey on the rebound for Team Blue. They lead this one by three. Left side for Lau. Inside for Carmen. Left hander, no good. Uh-oh. Picked up by Destiny Adams. Adams over the timeline. 
Kiki Adams right Finding the Kiki Rice. Pump, pump. And the jumper off the backboard, no good. Adams on the offensive rebound, up and under. Tough. And a whistle. So 2.57 to go. It's a one possession game. Oh, Kaz, it's three minutes it's left. Said, everything's starting to get litty here. Here we go. I'm hitting the, the button. Shows Jim in the South Bronx for Slam 16 NYC, fueled by Gatorade. Adams at the free throw line. They need these free throws. First one's good. And she delivers. I'm hitting the button, Bobby. Stupid finish alert coming up. I love to see it. This is what I came to see. Down to the wire. Count and it. a second. She is built for this stage. Destiny Adams with the two crucial free throws. It's oh, a one-point yeah. game. Ariel Jackson looking to run and gun. Cheetah like quickness to the Ooh. 10. Lost control goes out of bounds. Ooh, I think they might have got away with one right there. It looked like she might have just let that one go. Paris Clark is re-entered. Re excuse me. Sonia Citron is also back number 11. And Leah Del Rosario has returned, number 23 in red. 66-65, one-point game off the inbound. Wow. Yes! Looked like a little bit of miscommunication there with uh, Rosario Michael. getting in the game. You got to call out who you got when you sub in. Angelica, oh, looks like we got some steps. Angelica Velez was trying to get things going there for Team Red. They're now down by three, 68-65, and Paris with a short breather. She has checked back into the lineup. 2.36 to go. Kazim Famuide, I'm the voice Bobby C. Some intense action here at the Gauchos Gym in our first matchup. We got a stream. Full court press right here. Splitting the double team with Paris, Paris Clark. Clark. No one's going to stop her. And a whistle, so she attacks the rim. So here's the thing with the full court press, right? Somebody's got to eventually stop the ball. Because if you beat that first trap, you got a man advantage coming down on the full court press. And if nobody stops the ball, that's going to happen every time. Either a wide open shot or someone's going to the free throw line. And Clark is definitely a crafty anticipator too, Kaz, because I, I know she was prepared in that moment that she would kick out if she had to. Oh, yeah. So Del Rosario, number 23, back in. And also returning is Madison St. Rose, number 21. Five-point game. About two. Oh. And perhaps a bad break there. Yeah. I don't know. No she, official saying it'll stay with Red. Now, now she can't run. Paris. Two-time Journal News Rockland Player of the Year. Out of bounds. But it will stay with Red. Velez will inbound this time. 2.21 to go. Adams. That one rolls off but gets the rebound again. She'll try to reset the offense. Adams is trying to put this on her and back. good defense there by Sonia. Bounce pass and Jackson. Jackson again. She's been outstanding here in the second. Ariel Jackson, Bishop Lachlan's finest. I mean, is it time to start talking MVPs of the game? Because Ariel Jackson, this second half has been all her. Del Rosario both, on both sides of the floor, too, offensively and defensively. Absolutely. And that an offensive foul charged against Del Rosario. She will check out. And checking back in is Jada Johnson, number three, and number seven, Kiki Rice. So just like that, Team Blue was in hot water, we'll say, as... And they've been able to push the lead back up to seven. 72-65, under two minutes to play, but this one far from over. Oh, yeah. You're watching Slam 16 NYC fueled by Gatorade. Jackson gets it off the inbound. Back to Lau. Gets the screen from Clark. Well, you don't want to do that. And good pressure by Red. Lau will get over the timeline. Good pass by Lau. And find Sonus Charm. And Team Blue starting to pull away here. Red's going to need to make some big buckets and quick, and that's a push off. That's going the other way. Can't so extend no that basket. arm, man. No Can't, basket when you drive into the hoop, you got to keep that arm tucked in. Once you go like this, the refs are going to call that every single time. Paris Clark. 
has Clark on the break. She's going to stop and bring it out. And the clock is probably dead. This could be the dagger. Oh. Trying to knock down a three from the outside. Yeah, it might be time to start shooting, shooting from deep. 65. That one almost stolen by Sonia. Yeah, if I'm Team Red, it's time to start, uh, you know, hucking away from downtown right now because time's getting away from them both. There it is. And trying to go for that too is Paris. We can't get the finish. And we've got one minute to go in this game. So blue. To might no comfortably actually walk into this victory when we were thinking otherwise. Yeah, Kaz, I might have I might have hit the stupid finish alert button too early. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> it's, it's totally my fault. Sonia Clark, what a move! My goodness, Sonia Clark with the spinner. Sonia Citron, yep, yep. Spinner and winning. Angelica looked like she went to the to Euro and then stopped in and Africa that first. Should do it, I would say. <laughs> Twenty nine seconds to play. Step back. And Bobby Jack. Nice Give me shot. 23 seconds to go. 76-68. Pops to Angelica Velez for her play this afternoon. Yeah, she's been very impressive. There is Bolin. Shea Bolin. And it's a 10-point lead. Final seconds. And the three. For Madison St. Rose. Team Blue is going to walk away with this one. And our final score, 78-70, as Kaz mentioned. Team Blue with the victory. Still an impressive, impressive game for these young Hoopers. And again, I think the message for our fans at home is things are starting to get back, hopefully, you know, kind of slowly, but get back to some level of normalcy. Hey, slowly. Get, uh, you know, Slam and Gatorade giving these youngsters a chance to, to shine, basically. Listen, slowly, surely, safely. You know, everybody got out of here healthy. Nobody got hurt. That's always a win for both sides involved, obviously. You know, the final score is only one indication of success, but, you know, getting this game together, just being here is a success for both teams, all the players involved. So shout out to Team Red, Team Blue. A lot of high-level girls basketball taking place right now. So uh, great game, great game for both sides, but obviously they're going to be one winner, and it was Team Blue this afternoon. And Slam 16 NYC is presented and fueled by Gatorade. Wanted to give a shout-out, of course, to Gatorade and Slam for putting on this Awesome game for us this afternoon for the fans at home and also for all the college coaches that are getting a chance to perhaps check out some of this young talent. Congratulations to Paris Clark. In the recruiting process, yep, Paris Clark. The most valuable player. The most outstanding player of the game. Of the Slam 16 girls game. Paris Clark from Money Earn and Mount Vernon putting on for the city of New Warren York. And Lutheran. She's got already a treasure chest of uh, trophies and awards. Well, she could add another one today. I mentioned before the Newsday Long Island Player of the Year for 2020. NYSSWA second team, Class AA All-State. Two this past season, she averaged 17.7 points per game. Paris, you had an incredible game. You guys pushed it to a big win at the win at the finish well why was today was so important to you um it was very important to me because it's like i have been able to play a lot of games you know against my friends with my friends so it was just a good experience you know to feel like someone is somewhat normal what do you guys think was the edge for for the blue team to win today too um <laughs> i feel like the edge for us to win was just keep pushing you know we started off a little slow we're very lax days i feel like we just coach called a timeout she's like we gotta turn it up so we yeah. turned it up you had maybe, I think, at least four blocks that I saw. You, you're, you proved yourself to be a defensive presence. Is that a part of your game you just started developing? Um, no, I feel like ever since I was little, it was always like defense. It was very defensive. Defense wins championships, that's for sure. Right. Now that you've had this MVP, you've been named the MVP of this game, and you go, you're going into your junior year, a big year of making decisions, what do you think this proves today? Um, I think that this proves that, especially to myself, that, like, I got it. You know what I'm saying? Just keep playing, just keep moving forward, keep growing. Well, you're repping Mount Vernon, you're repping New York. I know you're going to do that just that. Thank you so much, and congratulations on winning MVP. A nice job there by Camille Cass as we get a chance to catch up with Paris Clark. 
Yeah, big shots to Camille. Game. Big shots to Camille, man. She's all things women's hoops, especially when it comes to slam. Great interviewer, great writer. And uh, definitely terrific showing by these young ladies here this afternoon and excited to see the boys game coming up on the stream at 430. So we wanted to have our fans stay with us for that or come back, I should say, for that. Get a chance to check out some of the highlights of today's game. Slam 16 NYC fueled by Gatorade. Some really terrific baskets in this matchup. Man, it was a hell of a game today, man. Very competitive. Wasn't a lot of showboating. It makes sense, Kaz. You yeah. know something sweet on Halloween? Oh, yeah. They, they, nah, man. You. I saw what you did there, Bobby. I saw what you did there. <laughs> man. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll see you at 4.30 for the boys game.